What is up, guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Titus Trumavicious. I'm a grandmaster, and I'm here to share my continued chess journey and the events that I've played so far this summer. So a quick recap, since I, the last time I uh, uploaded a video, uh, I finished the tournament in Tenerife, a little bit disappointing, uh, quickly went to the tournament in Barbera, uh, which I decided not to uh, do recaps for because uh, I felt like the tournament was a little bit too weak. Uh, but in the end of the day, <laughs> I didn't do too well. Uh, I dropped a couple of rating points, um, lost a key, uh, key round seven game uh, to the rating favorite Gr Gregorian, and my tournament kind of uh, didn't really have time to recover from there. Um, basically, uh, uh, I finished, I believe, ninth, even though I was seated second. Um, so it was, you know, a bit, a bit of a disappointment, a bit larger disappointment than Tenerife. And then uh, I recently finished a tournament in Paleora, uh, which I had really fond memories from last year. Uh, I, I thought the place was amazing. Uh, this year, uh, it was maybe 10 to 15 degrees hotter every day. Um, so it was very tough to play, uh, very tough to do anything actually. I was like 35 to 40 degrees every day. Uh, in the end, I managed uh, to win three games and draw five. Uh, but again, you know, as a grandmaster playing in these open events, uh, that was only good enough to lose 12 rating points uh, for me in that event. And I actually didn't even play the last game because I decided to uh, save my energy for uh, the next event that started yesterday. Um, here in Kavala, uh, Vasilis Theodoridis uh, tournament, a 32nd edition. And as you can see, we've already played three rounds. Uh, a quick sort of glance at the starting list here. Um, third seeded, so I'm looking forward, you know, to, 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 to do well in this event. Um, there's still a good number of grandmasters, obviously, so anything can happen. Um, but uh, as it goes in these open events, first round, uh, I got paired up uh, against... Uh, a much lower rated player. I was playing uh, a, a local player, Sideropoulos Nikolaos uh, from Greece. Um, we didn't really have that much time to prepare. I also uh, had an early morning flight to uh, Tessalokini and uh, then I came to Kavala. Um, so it was, you know, I was quite, quite, quite tired. Um, didn't really have much time to prepare. So I just wanted to be as solid as possible going to the first round, especially after uh, some some disappointment uh, results recently, and just play something that I'm uh, more or less familiar with. So I start with d4, and I was expecting d5, knight f3, knight f6, and g3, my usual setup. And now I wasn't sure what my opponent was going to do, because uh, he didn't have that many games in the database. I was mostly expecting, I would say, bishop f5, uh, and he would go for some sort of a slav setup uh, in a couple of moves. But also thought that e6 was possible, um, you know, to go for a Catalan setup. So I wasn't really sure, again, what my opponent was going to do. And he sort of surprises me a little bit and plays c5. Um, I'm like, okay, I'll play bishop g2, you know, normal moves, knight c6, castles. And now uh, my opponent decides to play e6. And after c4, we transpose to uh, basically a Catalan. Um, this position is played uh, quite frequently uh, at, at the top level. Uh, there is this topical line. Uh, D takes C4. Now White has um, quite a few moves. During the game, I was trying to remember what my analysis was uh, mentioning in this position, uh, but I could not. Um, I know uh, I knew that uh, Queen A4 was a move. Uh, as I checked uh, after the game, I believe Knight E5 was what was in my notes, uh, but I could not remember anything. I also believe Knight E3 is a move. And also, I know uh, from a year ago, when I prepared against uh, uh, my brother, actually, uh, in the national championship, that DC5 is also a move. But I couldn't recollect any of my preparation, obviously, because it's been, it's been a very long time since I played this position and, uh, or looked at this position. So uh, I just wanted to sort of, again, keep, keep the game sort of balanced uh, uh, and um, stable and see what my opponent is going to do. And as often uh, in, in these uh, sort of openings happens and op often in these games happen, uh, low rated players usually tend to uh, get creative and, and try to do something a little bit weird. Um, again, hopefully I, uh, you know, uh, I won't do something similar in, <laughs> in this event in the future rounds, wink, wink, because um, uh, I've already played a couple more rounds and something similar is gonna happen to me, obviously, foreshadowing. 
Um, so queen d1, rook d1, bishop c5 is very standard. Knight bd2 is a standard move to try to win the pawn back. And now the like much uh, the most played move is uh, c3 uh, by by a lot. And my opponent stopped to think, and uh, unfortunately for him, decided to play a move that I was very happy to see, e5. Well, while e5 seems logical uh, in, in a sense that you decide to open up the bishop, uh, basically you, you just lack development and coordination with your pieces to sort of justify uh, this early e5 uh, push. Because after knight c4, your pawn is obviously under attack, so you have to address it. And after e4, knight g5, it's under attack again. And after bishop f5, there is a couple of moves now that I can play. I was considering knight d6 immediately. I was considering bishop d2 um, to sort of go for a bishop c3 idea. But I felt like these options were a little bit um, not in the spirit of position. I wanted to develop um, sort of a long-lasting uh, initiative. And I decided to play bishop d3 instead, uh, basically immediately undermining this bishop if my opponent takes then, uh, uh, oh, actually, actually bishop f4 is also the move I forgot to mention, bishop f4, bishop d6 idea, uh, which, which was probably the strongest according to the engine. Um, but I decided to play bishop e3 and uh, basically challenge the bishop immediately. My opponent cannot take because knight d6 would come, so he has to play bishop e7, knight d6 comes anyway. I ta he takes rather, I take, and I have acquired two bishops uh, in a position where uh, the, uh, the structure is not fixed. So we can always change some, some pawns and some pieces, and the bishops can come to life um, uh, in the long run, even though this bishop on g2 right now isn't uh, the most active piece. My opponent kicks my knight with h6, makes a lot of sense, knight h3, uh, tries to trade out some pieces with rook d8, uh, but I think this also, uh, well, I believe it helps my opponent because he's, again, uh, kind of, uh, my, my rook is very uh, active and uh, it makes sense to trade it. But I also think that uh, trading more pieces, you know, in, in the long run, again, the bishops will become more powerful the less pieces there are on the board. Um, so rook d1, of course, I don't want to forfeit the open file just yet. Rook takes d6, rook takes d6, uh, short castles, knight f4. And here you can see basically the problem with black's, black's position. Um, my rook is very active, of course. My bishop is also keeping an eye on the a7 pawn. Uh, I would potentially want to go maybe knight d5 and trade the the... Uh, the knight on f6 um, and it's very hard to sort of find a good way for black to try to sort of parry all these threats um, he decides to play a6 uh, preparing to move his knight uh, from c6 uh, h3 rook d8 again trying to trade more pieces but again the more pieces you trade the, the more powerful the bishops will become in the long run rook to d8 knight d8 bishop d4 and here um, I was obviously quite happy with my position. I thought I was significantly better, but I wasn't sure if it was a winning advantage yet. Um, it's really hard to say, uh, to be fair. Um, and I was expecting my opponent more so to play, I believe, knight d7, uh, which I thought made more sense, uh, just to sort of, you know, not allow my uh, bishop to, to exchange the knight uh, on f6, because my idea is basically right to take on f6, and after gf, play knight h5. And this pawn cannot be guarded anymore. And uh, with this pawn falling, the pawn on e4 would also fall. Um, so I felt like knight e7 was uh, a good move to sort of sidestep all of that. Um, and then I didn't see, again, any sort of concrete ideas for me. Uh, I would just probably keep the game going with, you know, g4 or something. And then, you know, ask, ask more questions from my opponent. You know, where does he want him to put his bishop? Um, I also thought uh, that knight e6 made some sense, which he did in the game. But I thought that if I take on e6, which I did, you have to take with the f-pawn. Um, I'm not exactly sure if it's uh, a correct assessment, um, but um, I felt like you had to sort of keep uh, keep a lock on this uh, center pawn as much as possible, because after bishop e6, you lose uh, uh, some, some important time. And after a3, uh, basically I'm again threatening bishop f6 and, and to take on e4. And my opponent defends with bishop d5, but now I calculate for about 15 minutes to make sure that I've not missed anything. And after bishop f6, which is by far the best move, gf6, g4, uh, my king uh, slowly but surely comes to h2, g3, f4 uh, to collect the e4 pawn. And my opponent uh, fought for, you know, like the last two, three moves he fought for 15 minutes. Uh, he got very low on the clock and uh, just resigned in this position. 
um, which I thought was a bit premature, but uh, the position is indeed completely lost for uh, black. So uh, my opponent, you know, uh, he was again uh, a low rated player, 2180 uh, Fide, so uh, finally a good start to an event. <laughs> Winning a game uh, feels really good, especially again after coming straight from Paleohora. The event didn't go that well. Uh, I'll put in a, a link to the standings in, in the description below uh, so you can check out um, maybe the games as well. I think the games were broadcasted. Um, so um, that was round one from yesterday. Uh, I will upload it probably tomorrow in the morning because it's quite late already. And then we'll do some catch up as well tomorrow. Uh, rounds two and three will be uploaded, and then round four probably will be uploaded. The day after that. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you on the recap for uh, rounds two and three.